Uh, there was a lot of priority picks up the last game. Uh, yeah, there were. So Ben's last game was Quinn, Lulu, Cargillis, Lester, Corky. Yep. So we're on the right path for the same as last game. Okay, so Quinn and Lulu, first ones coming out. There's the Elise. So nothing really that out of the ordinary. Same um, as last game. Yeah, Cogmo. There's yep. Cogmo once again. <laughs> uh, Alistair and Corky. around it out. Well, will it be the Alistair and Corky? Uh, the Elise is kind of interesting, though, because like, she's a top-tier jungler, mm -hmm. but usually doesn't draw bands. It just kind of makes the pool smaller. So then you might knock someone into like, a B-tier jungler. So I can understand the Elise ban generally in previous weeks because there was no other jungler really in the same tier yes you have nidalee yes you had graves which graves has gone down a little bit yep. nidalee is still there um we used to see elise bands just because of her catch potential her ability to very safely clear camps always high health a good presence around like rift herald that kind of thing so just for a lot of reasons, very difficult to deal with. And it used to just put pressure on people that maybe had a small jungle pool to then early pick a jungler. But that doesn't seem to be the case now that Gragas is back. There are very few junglers I would ever say can't play Gragas. He's yeah. a fairly easy champion to play, but a fairly difficult one to get everything to work out perfectly on. Easy to play, difficult to master, yeah. I think, is, uh, is Gragas, because uh, landing that ultimate is surprisingly difficult. Um, Alistair was the final ban, and losing first pick. So that leaves up Callista, uh, most likely coming in for Copenhagen Wolves here. Corky was banned. Okay. I feel like we're in some kind of like horror movie or something horror, with this more music. like a war film. Oh, like yeah. We are getting ready for there was battle some, here. There were some really high pitched strings a couple uh, of seconds ago. Okay. It was like, yeah. I d I have just not heard this music before. No, I mean, it doesn't look like a horror film so no, far. I mean, well, the, you know, the picks and bands are okay It so turned far. into it for, for Wolves last week, uh, last game, yeah. with having such a good lead and then the uh, the Fiora incident happened. I guess the Malphite was like a jump scare. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. Fiora? Uh, mm, I don't know whether we'll see it again. Uh, right now, we've got the Lucian locked in, so... Holy yeah, Phoenix uh, has been the priority here, obviously, with the cog, with the corky band away. I wasn't sure whether we'd see it again, but I we are seeing the Fiora again. I'm yeah. not sold on it. It's a bold play. Let's see if it pays off. I actually, I don't know about this pick. Because in, hmm. the, in the first game, like, the whole problem was that he went for the 1v1s and couldn't win the 1v1s. And he was ahead. So, it, so far he ahead. Was, he was ahead of his lane. Yeah. He wasn't ahead of Holy Phoenix, yeah, which is the problem. When does a Lucian... Okay, it's a long lane and there was no turret there. Yes. Like, Lucian excels in those circumstances. It, it was from the fact that he, like, he like TP'd into the minion wave. Like, that's yeah. so disrespectful against something like a Lucian that yep. has his ultimate available. Yep. Because, like, f especially in that kind of situation, Fiora in these 1v1s is exceptionally good against champions that have, like, one ability that if you repost it, that's it. That's the trade done over. Lucian's just like... Repost my Ardent Blaze. Yes. Hey! hey. Or <laughs> repost some of my ult yeah, shots. It's I like have another 29. <laughs> it's so like, oh, you're going to stand still for my for my ult. Oh, good, cheers, job, uh, good job. That does absolutely nothing with your repost. Yeah. So, yeah. Actually, fairly difficult to trade against. But as you said, the first mistake was teleporting into the minion wave. So, mm -hmm. saw that. Um, next two pickups from uh, Huma was Gragas and Malphite. These teams are really it's, um, it's the spending same. their time in the champion select. It's, this is legitimately the same comps so far. Uh, Lucian Gragas Malphite, Fiora Braum. Are we actually going to have a full... I'm trying to think back uh, to a series so Bra if that's Braum ever was happened. A Braum was actually on Huma's side last time. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Okay. So it is a little bit different. But Slightly different. I wonder if that's ever happened. If you've had a full champion select exactly the same. I feel it's like, like you we know have. Repeat. I'm pretty sure I've casted a game a long, long yeah. time ago. I think it was in like LCS... Uh, Pre qualifiers for like a games calm. I remember right. it happening. I was casting with Panky and uh, I was like, huh, it's the same. I don't even have to do anything. Yeah. Game's going to play out. <laughs> Just identical. rewind game one. <laughs> redo. Um, There's no jumps in Challenger series, so you can't redo like that. No. Callista uh, picked second to last rotation like last time. Uh, and then Rek'Sai as well for the jungle. Callista falling down there, but you've already picked um, Lucian. Yeah. 
I mean, that's the thing. Is so. it, there's no there's no pacing on this that Callista would have been needed in any no. earlier rotation. And you want to pick on mid lane, so. Unless you're Vitality and you want to run Lucian top lane. That could have been the ultimate bait. <laughs> would have been Huma yeah. going, ha, we'll have the Callista well, in our second Well, the type rotation. of player who could do it as well. He is. Well, uh, no, he is, but I, I feel like Whirlip, when he plays a carry, it's like a jack. Somebody that in innately gets tanky as well. Mm. I don't feel like Whirlip is the glass cannon type of player. Yeah. Because I, I feel like generally he picks decent engages, but there are times when, like, even he knows he's like, well, yeah. I've gone too far on this one. Yeah, yeah, likes to take um, the hits. But then again, you go for, like, a more sterk build, so you, you're, like, anti-burst build. Mm. So it's actually not too bad, but yes, you are definitely more glass cannon than, um, like, a Jax. Uh, yeah. So last two pickups from Huma were huh. LeBlanc once again, and then they subbed the Morgana in for the Braum. So, uh... More zone control, different type this time. Uh, obviously, with the ultimate, has the uh, the binding as well. So who have a, a little bit of extra catch potential, yeah, and the black shield onto Holy Phoenix. So they're looking for the same kind of setup. Black shield can also go onto God Road. That's actually a, a fairly formidable combination. Very difficult to stop a LeBlanc going in for just damage and the the, the to lock the chains before uh, popping that black shield. So. It's, it's a decent setup. It is a decent setup. Uh, very similar to what we saw last game, and they won with it. So, um, waiting on that last pick from Copenhagen Wolves. It's going to be the Ori. Pretty, uh, huh. pretty plain. Pretty simple. And huh, I'm just thinking of ways like you can get like the Rek'Sai in and then like ball the Rek'Sai. Um, uh, onto the Braum and then Callista ult back out would be the That's good. Yeah. Uh, the yo-yo play, mm. I guess. Smack him with the yo-yo. Ness him. Um, but yeah, Fiora into the top lane. It's still the full one, and yeah. I didn't like it last game. So they needed a lane that would survive against the LeBlanc. Um, the Victor was okay in the last game, but they were like, "Oh no, we need more team fight." Oriana's like one of the only real mid lane champions that is viable that has more team fight than Victor. Yeah. Victor's laser and the Chaos Storm are already really good in that situation. Yeah. Oriana is just a massive burst of damage. And then it's like, well, I can shield people. So yes. it's an interesting one. I don't know whether I like the Oriana pick here. I yeah. So Ori, as always, is kind of like the lane neutralizer. It's like it's very difficult to win lane against an Oriana, but it's also very difficult to lose lane against an Oriana. Yeah. So I don't know whether Soren's going to have too much carry potential outside of team fights, And I wonder whether they need that on the wolf side. I definitely would be inclined to agree. Because um, now kind of on Panoi, like he's got Callista here with like Braum. Like that's a lane that can carry really hard if they yeah. get ahead. Um, but he's up against Holy Phoenix and it's just be cast and it's difficult to kill Holy Phoenix one with Lucian, two with a black shield and bindings and everything on top of him. Yeah. And also disengage from Tantrin. A strong front line as well from the top lane. Like it's difficult even to get to Lucian, who is so mobile. So it's kind of a coin flip. Like what I am saying is both of these compositions can win the game very easily. Like they are well put together compositions is whether you can execute in a game. And that's the problem that Copenhagen Wolves had in the first game, is they simply couldn't execute it. Mm. Um and they just saw individual misplays where they were making mistakes and just couldn't push the uh, push the advances that they had on the solo laner. Yeah, they, they really couldn't. Uh, and honestly, I'm looking at this game and looking at the setups. So for Huma, as long as Willip doesn't fall too far behind in this game, they should actually be able to make somewhat of a repeat performance just looking at the engages that came from the last game. So Wolves had their work cut out for them, really. Yeah, to illustrate um, the point where Wicked wasn't able to go for the 1v1s, we're actually going to take a look at where he actually TPs into the Lucian and uh, gets blown up, basically. Ah, uh, this... He, he even dives in to try and get that, and there you go, there's the repost on the ult, and it's just like, oh, you've got all these shots, and then moving back in. If he dodges left, if he dodges left, he, he survives a little longer. Oh, hey, didn't see hey. you there. <laughs> <laughs> didn't see you there. Uh, yeah, yeah, if he dodges left, he doesn't die. If he dodges right, unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean... If if that was a standard 1v1 lane matchup, like if that was somehow Wicked and Whirlib, I would say the room was there for Whirlib to have read how the dodging was going on Wicked. The problem is I don't know whether Holy Phoenix has played an, enough in that situation against Wicked to know that Wicked was going to dodge that yes. way. So I leave it more up to just chance. There's a lot of mind games going on in that. Oh, that uh, yeah, there is. There always is. Always. Well... There's no mind games in this composition here, because you can see all of them. 
Hashtag HMA win, hashtag CW win. Join the discussion on Twitter. Tell us what you think about these compositions and how the series is going to go. Because currently, Humor are 1 and 0. Chris Copenhagen Wolves still need to claim that one win to draw this series up. Let's get into game. The final yeah. one of the day, the final one of week four. Which is the penultimate week of a regular season. I actually thought you burped first dress. No. Uh, but it was Santorin as he was walking out of base. Oh, you thought that was me? I'm, I'm actually... Because yeah. I saw you take a drink. And I'm I was actually like, impressed you thought that was me. Excuse you. <laughs> no, it was, uh, was Gregus. Well, at least now I know I can just do them and be like, it was Gregus, it was yeah. Gregus. <laughs> it's like, mate, he's dead. Yeah. For one time. It, you know that interesting conversation? Well, th the conversation with... Um, Dodging patterns is actually fairly interesting. Yeah. It's something that some teams actually did invest resources in. I would imagine there are a couple that are still doing it. Mm. Um, but just tracking players, seeing how they dodge. Because there's subconscious tendencies that a lot of players will have to always dodge skill shots the same way. Yep. Some players are incredibly easy to read. You'll have noticed sometimes in if you watch high-level solo queue that... I don't know. So like, especially supports, I think, is the most prevalent in mm. when you look at hook patterns, that kind of thing. It's really interesting, actually. Uh, it's something Krepo talks about a, a fair amount when we're just talking about different players, about when he used to play. Really interesting topic that really is just something people don't think about. And it's really important. Oh, yeah. One, if you can get in the head of your opponent, like if you start reading them on every mm. single like skill shot, it's really big. It's like, how is he doing this? How is he predicting me every single time? But often there are those subconscious tendencies, as you were talking about. So very interesting topic. Um, it's difficult to see on the fly during a game like this, but yeah. you have to study like play patterns over multiple games. You have to look at specific players, how they uh, work in certain matchups. Um, but no, it is uh, very cool to think about. Cast so. took a lot of damage off that. Um, he did. That crook hit him once more than he really wanted to. Which is a lot when you're a support. It <laughs> it's is, just yeah. like, crook oh, hits like don't. a truck. Uh oh. Cast. Oh, good binding though. Denies yeah, nice. the follow up engage. On to just we cast. That was a, a bit of a tentative moment there. Could have gone badly, but nevertheless, the level two has gone on to the Copenhagen Wolves uh, bottom lane already. So this is kind of what we were expecting to see in the last game. Wicked 1v1 up against Whirlib. Now Malphite just has to, you know, be in the lane as a presence. It stops Fiora from farming quite so easily. Yes, Wicked is putting damage down onto Whirlib, but look at how Wicked is prioritizing auto-attacking Whirlib over farming, over stepping into the minion wave to actually clear it. Now he goes to clear while he, he can, and it just means that there's trading back and forth constantly. And Willib is as happy to just smack some minions down for a while and, and be ahead on CS. Whereas Wicked is trying desperately to chip away at the rock. Well, he's burnt all of the flask stacks. I just have to see whether it's worth it because I believe Wicked's done the same thing. Yeah, he's he used has. all of his. And he hasn't been farming, whereas Willib has been prioritizing one trading back onto Wicked when he's going through the minions and also going onto the minions mm. themselves and picking up the CS. So we have to see over the next like 20, 30 seconds whether it was the right play. Well, the next step of this is that Willib has burned through his mana. Wicked hasn't burned through his mana. Mm. And that is when it kind of starts trading is have you been trading mana effectively for CS or f for health and, and health potions, the effective health of the lane? Willib is way up on CS right now, as you'd kind of expect, but has been at the cost of his mana at the same time. So if, Willib, if, if Wicked can capitalize on that, if Willib doesn't recall and teleport back top lane, there is a potential for him to uh, come out ahead in this lane, but it's a tough, tough one for your into Malphite this early. Yeah, really difficult. Um Malphite definitely gets the short end of that stick in the top lane. Uh, originally, when we saw Fiora of the rework, some people were actually speculating that Malphite would be a good pick into Fiora because you throw out the cheese wheel, you get the extra movement speed, and then you just kind of kite her around. But then, as people played it more, people realized that with Fiora, you can't have the Silent Shard up all the time. You actually run out of mana, even with Corrupting Potion, and then Fiora just does more damage than you and pokes you out. So that's what we're seeing in lane. Yes, although I still maintain it's a, it's a fine lane. I it's fine, it, but it's not one that Malphite wins. No, no. It, then again, Malphite very rarely actually wins uh, outwardly, if that makes sense. We've yeah, we talked yeah. about him being a containment, so, you know, against the likes of Irelia, sure. Like, it's just a farm lane. You yeah. neutralize a lane. Malphite is the Orianna of top lane. You yeah. neutralize a lot of lanes. Some, t some lanes you lose. Malphite into Rumble is not a lane, but uh, it's a fun one. I remember people trying to play that in like season three, season four. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> oh. 
Well, into the mid lane. Again, this is the Orianna of Orianas in mid lane. <laughs> the uh, Orianna of mid lane, funny yeah. enough. Orianna. Okay, Troven is good to go. This goes into his jungle. Uh, top lane, first item pickaxe. Okay. So he's going obviously towards a Titanic Hydra or Ravenous Hydra, but the pickaxe is an interesting one because it's extra damage and trying to itemize before Whirlup gets armor in top lane. But sometimes you're, or most of the time, you actually go towards the tier mat so you can get um, all of the auto attacks in your single combo. Um, so, yeah, it's just interesting he's gone for the pickaxe on his first back. Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't have the money to get the full tier mat, so he's got to sit there and uh, make sure he can just farm up Wicked not wanting to kind of overextend himself, push his limits too far. So uh, is this going to sit on that component so far? And then play the waiting game and get it a little bit later. Indeed. We'll take damage though because of it. There's the result. You can see Whirlib on the other side is like, I've got a Ruby Crystal at my passive. Good luck with that. Yeah, because um, this is... Okay, that was one of the problems with going for like, you know, pickaxe over the tankier stats you get on the on the route. So like, you know, go for a Ruby Crystal, etc. Oh, ultimate onto God Bro, but he's out of mana. So, so he's just trying to poke him out. <laughs> yeah, it was also the minion wave as well that he was trying to clear up, but uh, he was just going back. So Good Yes, exactly. Go. He uh, was just trying to, to farm out the wave and make sure that he could hold the uh, the wave in place. So Nuxalot and Troven are in that bottom side jungle right now and uh, just fishing around for Je Suis Cass and the jungler Santorin. So at this point, very slow paced game to begin this one. We are expecting a bit of a farm fest in the top lane and uh, Je Suis Cass. So Nukes a lot support fight in the bottom side. However, the ultimate has been used by Wicked onto Whirlib going aggressive. Yep. No longer a farm fest. Whirlib will be jumping away with his ultimate and survives to live another day. Wicked with his ultimate there. So he will be backing off. We'll be backing away. Uh, again, the mana on Whirlib has gone. So results in a situation where he just can't really do too much. Has to back himself away. Uses that ultimate for it. They trade ult for ult. Troven, on the other hand, is going aggressive himself. You can see Soren has positioned himself on the lower side of uh, of mid lane, so knows that he can cover for Troven if Godbro starts coming aggressively through. Godbro is actually looking for his blue timing here anyway, so not really anything to happen in this setup. You would turn coats. 83% <laughs> now over to Huma. Uh, it's that autocorrect, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no problem. Santorin in the top lane is going to be taking away this pink ward. Got it. 30 gold in the bank. <laughs> um, we joke about it sometimes, but 30 gold is actually a lot. Like, that's just under half of a pink ward's cost. So it is a lot of gold that goes over if you manage to secure it. And it's also good when um, you actually have more than one pink ward in your inventory because you can only have one up at a time. You can place one down as yours is being killed and deny the gold. That's always funny. Yeah. It's just like you wait until they're on one more auto attack and then you go. My the dream the scenario is doing that to a Graves. Yeah, because <laughs> he reloads twice, yeah. goes for the last one as he's like, reloading, no. he place the other one. <laughs> or a Jin. Just as he's yeah. ready to reload. Oh, I'm sad we don't we haven't seen Jin in Europe. I know. Yet. I felt like we would at least see some of these challenger players pick him up. Yeah, I um, thought we'd see one, but then we haven't really got any Jin one tricks here. No. Or, or any like Jin spamming players like sneaky, sneaky played in a lot. NA played a lot of gin uh ooh. just yeah. whistles past sunuks a lot um yeah gin is an interesting one like that that was actually a really funny game because it opens up with him just walking into lane and instantly dying <laughs> um, it's always good when that happens but immortals cloud nine what a game there's so much action it wasn't a tactically sound game but it was a very exciting one pulse um, I, I have a feeling Humo CW is going to have just as much action. All right. Maybe All right. not in the first 10 minutes. Okay. Maybe not in the first 20 minutes. It's a dangerous prediction, Stress. <laughs> We've uh, been unlucky on predictions today. I know. I was. Um, it was more of a like sarcastic rhetorical one because oh, okay. we're 10 minutes in and there's been almost not even a gank. There has been uh, Soren being caught out. He's out. He doesn't have extra damage from the rest of his combo. He did have Ignite, so uh, Soren has to be aware of that. Uh, over the next couple seconds because the combo will be up from Godbro fairly soon and Wicked 
because he has lane pressure, means he can go over to that wall and take it out. Santorin's waiting in the bush, and Body Slam, Flash, Ultimate, knocks Whirlup in. Uh, knocks Wicked into Whirlup. Grand Challenge has been popped, but really oh. to, uh, to uh, no resolve. And the ult there, uh, the auto followed. He gets clapped. <laughs> he, he got like uppercut yeah. by Malphite on the way out. Uh, really kind of interesting sequence there. So, Huma, you would expect, would utilize the Malphite ultimate at some point Ooh, in that conversation. Oh, dodge Whoa. out by God, bro. This could be a big outplay in the mid lane. We'll jump away, jump back in. Flash, ignite. Oh, Not he didn't enough. get him. God, bro, could be in trouble now. Lower mana. He's lower mana, doesn't have his distortions. Flash, knock up, Troven. Will we pick the right one? He has done it so far. Mini Crazy auto girl. is following afterwards. He shoots. We'll jump back. He scores! He scores! Go! <laughs> Got him. Got him. Um, so, what were we talking about? <laughs> there was a lot of interesting little things at, at this point. So, top lane, uh, Santorin and Whirlip. I, You know, you're expecting the Malphite ult to come, and so is Wicked. Wicked sat there like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, because he wants to repost the ult. Problem is, they have a lot of crowd control <laughs> in the rest of it, so they just bait Wicked out into holding his repost for so long that it's just he gets auto to death. Um, at least I think so. There was maybe a repost somewhere in there. So Godbro oh, did sick. manage to dodge this out. Unfortunately, uh, just one auto shy. Godbro then also stacks his clone and himself on top of each other. I mean, it's not like Troven's going to really fall for it, mm. that uh, he, he misreads the clone. <sighs> Satisfying. To be honest, Soren's uh, Q probably would have picked that up as well, but uh, it Troven but... worked for that. So he will be picking up the kill here. Um, and yeah, just a nice gank, nice reaction in from Troven out of the jungle. So far, this game is fairly even. Uh, so far, we do not have another call from Holy Phoenix, but we do have Sandrin in the top lane. He is lying in wait. He is... <laughs> Take two. This time they here. actually just open with the Malphite yeah. ult. <laughs> Psych! <laughs> Either that or what would be even better is you know when Gragas throws out his Q barrel and then ults them onto the angle where the barrel is standing? Yeah. Imagine that, that they ult Whirlib onto the spot where the Malpha ult's already coming. Uh -huh. So you get the, the knock back, knock up, and everybody kind of... Is the missile speed around. as fast as the Malpha? I wonder. I think there must be similar missile speeds. Well, that's what I mean, is if you calculate the, uh, the angle velocity. and velocity <laughs> required... The wind speed. Yeah, exactly. This has been a long time coming. Oh, in they Wicked go. Wicked was not expecting to be in the bush. Grand Challenge once again trying to get a little bit of healing out here, but there's the ultimate from both players. They basically did that. Assist yeah. came with That's the wall close. there. Um... Also stacking him any it further. works because they yeah. got dodge when they're knocked up or knocked back. So. Well, that, that's what I was saying is imagine if right. they did that like in an open environment. Yeah. Where it's like you perfectly read the angle. That would be sick. That would be. I, I mean, how, that was good enough. Practical. I'll take that. Yeah, it I'll was still a kill in the, in the one and zero. But that was very patient. That was... Knowledge that Wicked would go for that next minion wave. So it's like, I wonder where top lane's been. He hasn't been here for a while. Maybe he went AFK. Oh, Not only no, that, but it's like, oh, I haven't seen jungle in a while. <laughs> yeah. <as> well. like, <laughs> yeah. ha, two people and are off the map when we have jungle in the rift side. Side. <laughs> Like, I wonder where he could be. Well. <laughs> the more I think about that, the actually more surprised I am that Wicked got caught yeah. out by that. <laughs> No! Oh, Santorin. I think that was like 6 HP, uh, 6 HP away from being Trovans, but unfortunate. He did, however, get the Razor Sharp off because he smited first, so... I love doing that. It's like, I can't get this, but I'm getting the buff. Yes. Which could result in a war taken, which could result in a kill later down the line. So, uh... Ripple effects. Yeah. Hashtag ripple effects. It all stacks up. Ooh. Wallop has gone for Iceborne Gauntlet, by the way, which, yep. uh, as in Europe, we believe is kind of quite good because uh, you just do so much damage. Like, you uh, jump well, on someone, you, you clap them. And then <laughs> have, you ever seen a have you ever seen a Malphite that's got, like, 200 armor? 
clap yeah. with an Iceborne Gauntlet, or at least like way more than 200 ammo when I yeah. think about it. Like, you know, getting borderline 300 when you start clapping, because Iceborne Gauntlet's size, the scales. radius scales off armor. I had one in a game uh, the other day that went like 50 minutes, yeah. that like he clapped and it covered the entire inhibitor and the turret in front of it. I'm like, oh, okay. That's, All right. I guess I'm not quite passing through of, here. Uh, yeah. I'm like, well. Yeah. That's um, a big slow field. Like, it's actually really good, but Kobe heavily disagreed with me when I was in NA. It's like, no, it's not good. But seeing right here, if Whirlup goes 10 and 0, you're wrong. But just <laughs> we cast jumping in here, there's the ultimate, and Whirlup pops the ultimate. Look at the Iceborne Gauntlet damage, and that will be the 2 and 0 over to Huma. What is this personal vendetta that you've <laughs> come out with? A good play by Huma, nevertheless. Uh, coming out with a teleport play bot lane. I mean, this was what Huma were looking to do last game, yeah. but they ended up getting put behind on their engage from Whirlup, so they had to wait until later into the game to actually make those kind of plays. They ended up being able to get them. That results in the tower being pushed, kills, Iceborne Gauntlet, clearly the best yep. item pulse. Great um, for clean up there. I mean, le legitimately though, the next step to this is the same as what Willib did in the last game, which is ZZ Rot Portal mm -hmm. um, after the Sunfire Cape. This was the engage. So, so Nukes a lot conveniently got pulled back by Pinoy to stack up for the Malphite ultimate that finished after that teleport. So very clean by Huma, but yeah, I spawn with some fire cape, with ZZ Rot. Can't say Kobe really could have predicted that that would be the real meta for uh, Malphite top lane. So I'm actually not gonna cut him too harshly no. on that one. Well, that's not my problem, but no. Also, okay, it so was gonna, a completely different patch. I'm going to take this smoking gun and kind of shoot myself in the foot here okay. a little. Uh, it, hang on, is this the same one that we were playing Russian Roulette with earlier? Yeah, yeah. It's still Do we four have bullets. four bullets yeah, left? Still, yeah, okay, still, yeah. Okay. So there's a good chance that uh, I may not. But Santorin is going to go on Panoi here. There's the teleport coming in. And the barrel real quick. The ultimate to disengage in the bottom lane. There's multiple pings onto Whirlup, who was caught. He has his ultimate in about five seconds. I don't think he can get away, though. There's the ultimate coming in, and he will be shut down. Uh, now the ultimate comes up. If only he'd had it a couple seconds earlier, he would have been safe. Unlucky. So we were shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, yes. So um, right now, he can only really build that Iceborne Gauntlet because of so far, like how far he was in that lane. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you want to go for the new armor items in 6 3 that were changed and buffed. Like mm -hmm. uh, Sunfire Cape as a first item is so good right now because you get the anti push. Yeah. And also, Dead Man's Plate was nerfed. But then you look at the other items like Randoons, for example, the uh, armor alternatives are really good. Mm -hmm. So uh, as much as I like Iceborne Gauntlet, um, it's not always the best choice. It also helps that uh, Wicked is going Ravenous Hydra, so it's fairly squishy on the same side of that That's as true. well. So and is behind and doesn't really do damage to him. You can just smack him around a bit yep. in that top lane. Um, so uh, did I? Did one of those four bullets hit me, or did I get I the... I don't know, uh, although it doesn't show too much faith in you that you didn't get the empty chamber in the first time. So I don't know whether you've really got too much left to shoot yourself in the foot, but... I thought we were shooting you the first time we used it. I mean, I guess... Well, I was going to say uh, that's why you're wearing red, but you're actually wearing blue no. today, so... Bad I guess that's why I'm wearing red. You can't see me bleed. That's unfortunate. But, uh... Holy Phoenix. I don't think he's wearing the brown pants, but... Trovin's going to come in here. And clear out that minion wave. Nukes a lot. Oh, going to be CCing up Cass here. But Black Shield is a thing, so he's not going to be uh, dropping. 4-2 and two currently. Huma do have the advantage in this game. About 700 gold. Very similar to the last game. Whirlib roaming up. Here comes the passive pressure that is a Malphite with his ultimate available. Just walks up and everybody walks away from him. Oh, he spotted a pink ward, so he's going to be taking care of this real quick. And now he is on the hunt. Shard of the Monolith looking for some uh, squishy humans. Oh, Santorin jumps in. Ultimate to disengage. Troven coming in. He's kind of by himself being chased into the bush. Nice. Blue Trinket will keep vision. Holy Phoenix dodging and diving around this fight. The jump in from Godbro will be saved by Fate's Core. Ultimate onto Holy Phoenix. Double flash at the last popular moment. Troven will go down and now the chase under tower. Godbro will take one more tower shot before it swaps to Whirlim. He should be falling to one more as it goes down. Another one. Two and one. And Huma still get the advances in that trade. Yeah, in that trade, Huma managed to get a good few kills. They ended up being 3-1 and one because Panoi fell very early on in that fight. And they got another two to follow it up. But this is was the beginning of the engage once again. You can see here, look at the uh, the, the positioning from Holy Phoenix as he's going forward. So Santorin, I feel like actually 
it was a misclick there. I don't think he wanted to disengage. I think he wanted to blast the rest of the wolves into Godbro and Holy Phoenix. And then Holy Phoenix has to kite around because of that to adjust in the fight. Manages to get himself away from this engage, but in comes the uh, the unstoppable force from Whirlib. Whirlib is fine to trade his life at the end of this fight. Doesn't really have that big an impact once it's all said and done. And then Wicked was enough to hold the push for then. And uh, it's going to result in another push soon onto mid lane. But Whirlib was uh, Wicked was high enough health. Nobody really wants to trade against the Fiora. Indeed, a redoodle. Uh, however, maybe Holy Thing as well, because he went second item, uh, Phantom Dancer. Cole? Oh. Uh, no call. But Phantom Dancer. So yeah. uh, actually, Synergizer's won very well with the Essence Tree. We usually don't see it as a second item because you like to go Rapid Fire Cannon. But because he's going in a side lane and from game one, knows he can do a Wicked in a Lucian <laughs> Fiora matchup. So he's gone for this one, which will reduce the damage by uh, 12%, meaning that Wicked will find it very difficult to 1v1 him in the top lane. I'm sad we've still got no Dusk Blades anywhere on that. No, well, we've not had any mid laners today. Though, and we've had no champion to, to really utilize it. So. Yeah, it's sad. It feels like, bad, man. Yeah, because what do we have? I mean, Zed got banned multiple times, and we yeah. know uh, Suno was practicing it, but it got banned away from him. So, um, And then Talon, no real big Talon players here from like Pocket Picks or players who used to play him. Kha'Zix, no one's really picked him up, even though he got buffed multiple times. I actually think this is going to be a sleeper OP, pick. man. Yeah. Um, and then the other one, I guess, is Draven that we saw that cheese coming out. But, <laughs> I mean, who plays it? Handsammer, and he didn't play it today. So. Yeah, well, maybe he should have, looking at today. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Wasn't the best setup for him. But uh, this game, for Huma, seems like a decent setup to maybe take this series 2-0. They do have a, uh, a bit of a lead, just over 2k gold. But for now... Wolves are trying to hold on. They're buying time for Wicked down in the bottom lane to get that push on. He's got his teleport available. So does Whirlib. So teleport engage coming from Malphite is there, but uh, they do need a flank, realistically, for that. Ooh, Whirlib. Soren just got chunked out mid lane. Wave clear. Look at that. The uh, Icebond Gauntlet and Sunfire combo clears waves very quickly as Malphite. It's actually quite a big factor here that Soren got chunked out mid because it now allows Godbro to push mid lane and prep it for the rest of Huma to just move from top lane to, to mid straight away. They don't have to worry about anything here because of the engage potential and the damage that they have. They're able to just go mid and take the turret. Super easy because the wave clear got chunked. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves literally can't react. They can clear out this next minion wave, which will mean the inner won't go down. Wicked is now rotating in from the sidelines. Oh, he may be they're going to stack Godbro. in the jungle possibly. Well, up has his teleport and his ultimate. Godbro just uses Mimic to clear the minion wave, though, so it doesn't look like Huma are looking for the fight within the next 10 to 15 seconds. Dragon is alive, so Huma may be looking for that as the next objective and should be able to secure this blue on the way out. Holy Thing is also very aggressive E, and Wolves is fighted away by Troven, who gets there just in time. But uh, that does, however, mean that Dragon will be going over to Huma. This will be the second of the game. Not too impactful right now. Second one uh, yep. on the new patch is a dot, but it scales with levels. So at this point in the game, uh, it's actually not that much. When you get late into the game, it's just uh, over 100 damage as a dot. So good for chipping. Yes, it is. And that's on towers. Indeed. Yes. So uh, it's it's not a dot on champions, but it means if you ever get Dragon 5, you walk up to a tower, look at it, and it just sets on fire yep. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of like falls over. Yep. So, uh, we, we are yet to have seen that. This is the first real uh, competitive game in the West on 6.3. There probably was one somewhere this morning. So, somewhere they played. Somewhere, there are so many games right now going on. Like, yeah. whether it's, um, you know, the likes of the, ma the major regions like uh, LCK, LPL. Then you've yep. got, like, L uh, LMS is included in that as well. Yep. You've got, like, LJL, OCE. OPL. Like, oh, yeah, o o OPL. Like... There is a lot of League of Legends, of course, CB lot. I'm trying to list them all yep. so that I don't get tweets from viewers of one of these regions that are like, this is the best, why didn't you mention it? So we'll get into like LPV, UK yep. Premier, and like... There we go. <laughs> I think that's even just EPS. enough options. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've, we've proven the point. I think you're safe. Uh, okay, Holy I'm Phoenix safe. now closing in from the bottom side. Soren is going to be moving up to the top side, but just Sweet Cats may have locked him down. The Soul Shackles. Holy Phoenix, meanwhile, on the backside is blowing people up. He gets a kill onto Soren. And that, meanwhile, Godbro is just leading Wicked around on a leash, but he will repast it up. So nukes a lot. Just Sweet Cats and Santrin with Holy Phoenix are closing in, and they get the kill. Concussive Blows eventually gets there. The slam, bam, down goes Wicked.
Four for zero. Huma just absolutely body Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, crushing the Wolves right now in these fights. This game didn't start the way Wolves needed it to. It didn't start the way the last game uh, did by putting Wurlit behind. And Godbro and Holy Phoenix have had the same freedom in this game than they did in the last game. Uh, Huma can peel back and deal with Troven first, or they can risk the 50-50. They are dropping fairly low. There we go. They peel back, deal with Troven. <laughs> he started tunneling towards it. He did. He started, but... Uh... Unlike Mastermind, he did not finish at that point and uh, got blown up before the tunnel. And that was the end of that. That's the end of that chapter because <laughs> Huma right now, this was the fight once again. Godbro not quite having the complete domination over Soren when it comes to being able to blow him up in one combination, but it's enough for the rest of the team just to knock him down at this point. And Godbro, even being able to run Wicked around in the side of this fight, as the rest of Huma just dealt with the uh, remaining stragglers from Wolves. Yeah, Godbro actually just pretty much 1v1'd uh, Wicked. Yep. Wicked has been getting 1v1'd a lot this series. Mm -hmm. um, which is really a, an issue when you pick a full one setup and you have to be very confident. Because um, they first rotationed it twice. Yeah. Like they picked it as a first pick, then they did it again on red side. Uh, it's a lot of confidence to have in a pick when you can't utilize it properly. And honestly, I feel like this split for Challenger, in general, we've seen a shift be from the mid lane carries to like top and AD carry for most teams. Uh, Huma still obviously have mid lane carry from Godbro, but outside of that, I don't really see the likes of Soren, the likes of Pretty being the primary carries of their yeah. team. And even then, like Huma don't seem to have their primary carry being Godbro. Like, it seems to be more towards Holy Phoenix. And the same can be said for a lot of other top laners. We've got, like, Kaze, we've got uh, Wurlib, who... When we're seeing these these players that, you know, have had a lengthy history in LCS but aren't known for their 1v1s, we're seeing them start to struggle. Oof, got right over the wall. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, it definitely just seems to be the uh, mini meta we have in uh, EUCS. Well, that's where the, the carries are, that's how you itemize, or uh, how you draft these compositions. Gonna go for this fight here. I don't think it's gonna be the final fight of the game, but maybe they could get a little bit more from oh, this. Holy Will Phoenix, <laughs> he's taken so much damage, knocked up multiple times. That was a three, uh, three for one. Godbro also taken down by Wicked. That was a two for one. Wicked actually going ham here, but he's in this one on three. Now two v three as Troven joins the fight and they have repelled the push, but yeah. the inhibitor went down. No pushing potential further for the uh, for Huma, so that does repel the push from being the last of the game, but look to, look to be promising for Huma, but I want to watch out what happened to the carry. So here is the engage, double knockback on to the support in mid lane. Holy Phoenix then goes in, ah, gets uh. blasted back by the Callista ultimate and all the damage goes on top of him, so it was a good setup from Huma. Holy Phoenix survived for a very long time in the back of that, actually, and then Wicked manages to find his way onto Godbro and take him out. Means Huma do not have enough extra damage at the end of that fight to deal with a Fiora. Yeah, what they really need... Huma really needs to purchase a Roomba for the cleanup, but they uh, they didn't. Um, So yeah, in that last team fight, uh, Holy Phoenix... He just didn't know that Panoi had picked up Sir Nukes a lot. So he jumped in thinking he could burst down Panoi, and then he couldn't. So that was uh, one of the issues in that last fight. But ultimately, it, I don't think it really matters. 11,000 gold lead over to Huma. Um, control over this game. Baron is down and won't be up for at least another two minutes. Dragon is going to be spawning soon. Maybe if Copenhagen was going to get a pick here, this could be big for them. Panoi jumps in along with Nukes a lot, oh, but Wurlip already Soren. jumped onto the back lines, onto Panoi. He's being zoned away. Holy Phoenix onto the bottom side, throwing out the ultimate. Nukes a lot is also dropping low. That's the Q, the piercing light. Jumps over the wall, follows the team, has the reset. So much damage coming out from Holy Phoenix. He finds the double kill even as Rek'Sai has to tunnel away. Soren now being chased down by Wurlip. Connects to Seismic Shard, has the extra movement speed and is very tanky. Just needs Cast to deal a bit of damage here. Godbro's even there. He actually goes down, jumps inside of the shockwave. Surin, can he make it out? Actually, this may even just be the game. Everyone else from Copenhagen Wolves is dead, and Huma still have four people alive, including the AD carry. Yeah, and with just like that, Huma close out the game here, stress. Yeah, no shockwave available for Surin means no real way of holding on to this, and that should be the Nexus going down. 
There is a minion wave spawn. Hang on, so Nukes a lot is here. <laughs> this may be the defense. Third time is going to be the charm if they can hold on through all of these minions. Their turret is under pressure, but it's going to survive in the top side. Okay, so this one is not quite done for the Copenhagen Wolves. Huma, they don't have a Baron buff remaining, but uh, let's take another look at this fight. And focus on uh, Pinoy doing almost negative damage to Willib. Oh, uh, well, that's not negative damage on Willib. That is actually 100% of the damage going on to Willib. Got it. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, now ah, we're going to see. Second okay, time's okay. a charm. Uh, so, oh, this is just the tail end. So we're going to watch Godbro go to his doom. Shockwave animation starts. Ah. Uh. Got him. It's a predictive play. A lot is happening. Dragon goes down over to Copenhagen. Uh, Wolves. Oh, died. there's the ultimate coming in. And Godbro is also caught out. He jumps away with distortion. I think he's good. There's the barrel for the slowdown, and this could be a big punish onto Copenhagen Wolves. Holy Phoenix with the ultimate wapty wapty wap. Takes him out. Is that the beginning of your rap career? <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's dear, the noise that the calling makes, and what noise does Wicked make when he goes down because he's dead to Holy Phoenix. Oh, this is going so badly for Wicked in this game. Got those minions. Oh, he's going God, for the, he's going for the play. Like, <laughs> I'm seeing if I can get back in it with the reverse now. I've done the W in. I want to do the uh, W back. That would have been hilarious. Was setting him up for it. like a bro. Oh, dear. They didn't have the coordination. Oh, uh, well, Huma now as uh, as they push on to an exposed Nexus will be able to take this one, and they will close this week out. Here we go. Nexus goes down. Huma 2-0 and zero in the series against Copenhagen Wolves. Solid showing from that team. Really solid showing. This second game was what they'd expected to do in the first game. Yes. Put a little bit behind, managed to get back by Holy Phoenix 1v1ing down uh, Wicked, but this game was much better. Uh, two players, actually 0, zero 16 Perfect jungle support synergy from Santorin and Just We Cast. It's what you want. Give away all the kills, but die carries. zero times. Yeah, that is the dream. The dream. As, uh, a supportive jungler and a supportive uh, support, but no. Supportive support. <laughs> I realized what I said after I said it. I was like, who oh, doesn't notice? <sighs> um, but no, Huma, actually, yeah, always on top of the ball, but uh, Huma. Just good from them, honestly. Like, that second game was definitely cleaner than the first one. Um, and there was a lot of problems, I think, with Copenhagen Wolves and their game plan. It was very clear they wanted the 4-1, but when you don't have a 1 who can support the 4, then you hit major problems. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, it's difficult, right? Because you want a team to innovate rather than stagnate, and you want them to pick new things, you want them to try them new stuff, but if your top player can only successfully play, like, you know, good TPs uh, with, like, Malphite or Gnar, because we've even seen good Gnar players by, by Wicked, like, having the Rage Timer, which is actually very difficult to do, but mm. if you can't play around that and go for something like a Fiora, which is based on the 1v1s and cannot go for those 1v1s, it's difficult. And as a team, I assume they were trying to try this as a team, but when you're going up against Humo, who are specifically have strong 1v1 um, players on the team, yeah. they are good at dueling, it's difficult to run. It was something I would have liked to see them run maybe next week or something. Possibly, yeah. I, I, I just, I'm not sold on the way CW are playing to, to actually have that threat in the side lane, regardless of who seems to be their opposition. It, it, it's, a, it's a weird one. I just, I felt like... I feel like you're, you're very able to do something like this against them where you can take this lane that's not really going to lose, but it takes so long for the 1v1 to become apparent mm -hmm. that realistically it's too late and the game's over anyway. I think it's, it's a very difficult style to play if that's not the style of, of, of top laner you are. And, you know, Wicked as a legacy player has, you know, for, for so long been about Irelia and actually has been about dueling, but it, for whatever reason right now, it just it seems difficult for Copenhagen Wolves to get that style working for yep. them. We're going to get a little bit more insight here as we have Holy Phoenix on the line talking about his win. So first off, hey, ho holy, 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 hey, hello, holy, holy Phoenix. Phoenix. How's it going? Hey. I can't They're speak, fine. unfortunately, but uh, how are you feeling about that win? Because it was very clean from you in those two games overall. Yeah, like I wasn't happy with our performance last week. I thought we would do 2-0 as well, but uh, yeah, we went 1-1. So getting to all this week is really good for me. Felt good. 
So we want to talk about the first game uh, a little bit. So you were given a lot of time in the bottom lane. You picked up the item Cull uh, to, to buy yourself extra time. And then 1v1 Wicked in lane. Um, how was that game for you? Did you feel under any pressure there with a lot being put on you as a player to carry? Yeah, I think after that first blood game was too easy because like uh, when I got Cull for our first blood, it's like 850 gold plus, mm. which was really good. And I get the solo experience, solo gold, which was really good. And I knew that I would carry and do a lot of damage that game. And like Pino felt behind in the late game especially, it was like 100 CS, and uh, in the DPS wise, I was doing uh, two times more damage than him, and yeah, it was, I could say, easy game, honestly, like, for me at least. It was very clean, um, and yeah. in that uh, first game specifically, in terms of you being a carry, you guys drafted, you know, uh, Whirlup going onto a tank to facilitate the rest of the team, where you had a carry in the mid lane, a carry and AD carry. Was that to do with your prep coming into this week? Because it always feels like every week you have someone who's playing the um, support the rest of the team character, and then you have two other carries. Is that what you drafted this week and went well, in thinking about? Yeah, pretty much. That is, like, Malphite in this meta is really good because you see, they pick Kalista and AD jungler and AD top lane. And when you pick Malphite, they can't do anything. He can just tank front line and drag us after the buffs are really good right now. So we can, they both can uh, super hard engage and they can tank a lot of damage and they actually can do damage. So I think Gragas and Malphite was really good and we practiced uh, a lot this week, these two. And it felt good, like... Uh, even though you are behind, you can always engage on them, hard engage on them, pick their carries up, burst them down, then win the team fight and go for the objectives. Very interesting with yeah. the Malphite pick. It's something we've discussed a fair amount and ourselves. Too, yeah. um, with regards to the Challenger series as a whole, uh, you guys played Millennium in week one and unfortunately weren't successful there, but you seem to have got better, especially this week. Uh, where do you think you guys are right now in the Challenger Series standings? Um, I would say second after Millennium. Not going to say that uh, we are better than Millennium and can beat them for sure, but I think we can compete versus them at this point. We learned a lot. We improved as a player as well. Yeah, I think so. Like in the we played uh, Millennium in the first week, and they felt like they played better as in individual players. And now, after that practice, a lot of practice, uh, our bot lane, me and Kaz, getting uh, doing better overall. And it was uh, one of the big problems in the match Millennium. So, like if we play versus Millennium, we sure gonna do a lot better and. Uh, if we keep practicing like that and keep improving like that, we have a big chance to uh, winning the playoffs. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that as well. Uh, final question here, Holly Phoenix, uh, just to kind of touch on Inspire, because they actually beat Millennium, who we were talking about just then. So what is your opinion on Inspire right now? Do you think like everyone can copy the formula that they used in uh, the first series today to beat Millennium? Um, maybe, but I think... Uh, it was a bad, just bad draft for from Millennium. Mm -hmm. If they they lost because of the draft, and I don't think Millennium will do the same mistake again. So it was just lucky for Inspire, I would say. And uh, in the playoffs, it's it's the most important thing. Uh, I'm sure that every team gonna draft well, and the who is the better team gonna win? Like there won't be uh, big draft differences uh, in the pick wise. So, I don't think so. Okay, well, uh, I absolutely agree with you there, Holly. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Congratulations on the 2-0 week as well, and we will chat to you later. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, pretty much confirms a lot of what we were thinking about. And it's interesting him touching on, like, Inspire versus yeah. Millennium, because, yes, there were drafting mistakes, but they definitely made in-game mistakes as well. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is like I don't want to make excuses for Millennium in any mm. respect because sure. the result on the day is as it is. Inspire do, did take the win. Um, Millennium had locked their spot and it was a drastically different Millennium than we've seen. 
whether that is because Millennium actually have taken some kind of decline over the last week, which is possible. We have seen that in previous splits or whether it was just a blip on their radar. Honestly, we won't find out until playoffs. Yep. But it does now start to ask questions. They're not going to go 10-0. They're not going to be undefeated. So and there are a lot more questions to be answered by Millennium now than we've really seen. For sure. I would like to see also, as Holly Fingers mentioned, the drafts as well. Because if everyone's playing on this level playing field, then maybe we'll have better interaction between the team as we head into mm -hmm. playoffs. But now that we have all the games, at least today, played out, let's see where the pl uh, places all the teams on the standings ahead of the final regular season week next week. So uh, now Inspire Esports on number one with 10 points, reclaiming that from Millennium, who are on nine, followed up by Huma on seven. Yeah, and then we get to what is going to be a tight race by the looks of things. The Wolves not able to pick up a point today. SK able to pick up three, which puts them only a point behind a potential playoff place. So uh, that is uh, a bit touch and go down at the bottom side. Mao's looking in a fair amount of trouble right now, only with one point after four weeks. Yeah, it's got to be scary with SK nipping at the heels of Copenhagen yeah. Wolves. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that one works out. Anyway, make sure to join us next week on the Challenger Broadcast for our last six games before playoffs. We'll be starting off the day with Mouse Sports and Copenhagen Wolves. Very important game for Copenhagen Wolves there. Yeah, man, that's a critical game because if the Wolves lose that and Maus get three points, they tie. And if that game goes that way, potentially, potentially, it's an outlier, out, outlier chance. SK versus Millennium, our second series of the day, could have massive implications. And then Huma versus Inspire. You just heard Holy Phoenix talking about how he feels like Huma are the second place team. Inspire right now are at the top of the table. So yeah. if they're second place, some some moving around is going to happen next week. It's going to be super interesting. And uh, as Deficio joined you today and had wrong predictions, Quick Shot will join me for a little bit next week. Will you'll be in for one of the series as well, and we'll have to see whether Quick Shot's any better at predicting yeah. as well. But <laughs> you know, I'll some as well. If, so. <laughs> if, if you want to make your own predictions, maybe take a look at the schedule, standings, anything to do with Challenger. Head over to LODSports.com. You can find that and all of the leagues I was talking about before, or at least the major ones. At least the major <laughs> ones. Anyway, tune in on Wednesday night, 5 p.m. PST, Thursday, or 2 p.m. CET for the latest episode of PTL. Then right after at 3 a.m. CET, the North American Challenger Series starts their penultimate regular season week, starting the day with third place Team Dragon Knights taking on first place Apex. And with that, that draws another week of Challenger to a close. So from myself, Stress, and the Challenger broadcast team, Deficio. thank you and Deficio. Thank you for joining us this evening, and we'll catch you again next week on Tuesday. See you then. Division, that's 15 auto attacks. Millennium might be able to stop it though because they're on your buy. This could go quite badly. Koscu's getting chunk one up with Joko well. that's a steal from Joko. Big ultimate in from Satorius. This is getting messy very quickly. Warlight jumps onto Handsammer. Should be able to pick him up. Or not, there's the shutdown onto Fiora. Kaze double kill coming in from Handsammer. Four for one. <laughs> Indifferent. <laughs> Indifferent. Inspire Esports 2 and 0 over Millennium in week four. Is looking for the flank here. Activates that W, wants to go in on Vardex. Devastating charge onto Vardex, ultimate as well. But the Stand United's coming in, it may be in time. Yes, it is. Spirit's Refuge comes up. Doko with the E, the flash, and the jump onto Nardi. The package has been delivered. And with this win, with SK closing in and taking down the Nexus over Mouse Sports, Deficio is wrong. <laughs> Just to rub it in, particularly in a 1-1 series with two struggling teams face each other, it often becomes a very messy affair that can go either way. And he was right, he was half right but Wicked will inevitably push this tower as they need to make a play in the bottom lane. Whirlup jumps in with the ultimate, everyone explodes! The ultimate from Sanchurin was massive! And that's a third kill going out. Wicked is just too late to the party. Maybe he should have stayed top lane, and Humor are now pushing. Mana doesn't have his distortions flash, knock up Troven. Will we pick the right one? He has done it so far. Mini Crazy ultimate girl. following afterwards. He shoots, oh, jump he scores! He scores! A kill onto Sorin. And meanwhile, Godbro is just leading Wicked around on a leash, but he will repast it up. So Nukes a lot, just three cats and Santrin with Holy Phoenix are closing in and they get the kill. Concussive blows eventually gets there. The slam, bam, down goes Wicked. Four for zero. Puma just absolutely bodied Copenhagen Wolves.